Hey folks, I'm here today taking a look at the Bonayo Sparkle Beverage Carbonator. Now I know this isn't exactly techy and it's not really makery, uh, but if you spend a lot of time behind a desk, you probably drink a lot of carbonated beverages. Uh, and this thing could expand your carbonated beverage horizons. Now this is a fairly long-term review. I've had my Sparkle for four months or so. I've probably made on average two drinks a day. So you're talking hundreds of drinks have gone through this guy. So I have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't. And while I don't actually own a soda stream myself, I think I can give you a pretty good idea on how the Sparkle compares to a traditional carbonator. So before we talk in depth about the Sparkle, let's talk about how a traditional carbonator works. Uh, most of those devices, including the Soda Stream line, start off with a pre-compressed CO2 cylinder. Now that CO2 canister is connected to a valve that leads to a bottle that is, that is airtight. Uh, whenever the, the valve is opened, usually by pushing a button on the machine, the compressed CO2 is released into the bottle, stirring up all the liquid, adding pressure to the bottle itself, and suspending carbon dioxide in your beverage. That, that's how you get the carbon into the beverage. Now, Sparkle takes a different approach. Uh, Bonneo realized that you can create carbon dioxide from some fairly common and, and relatively safe kitchen chemicals. So the two chemicals used in this reaction are baking soda and citric acid. Uh, baking soda is very common. It's used obviously in baking, but also in antacids. It's like the main ingredient in something like Tums and gives it that, that chalky taste. Citric acid is not quite as common as baking soda. It's used a lot in like candy making. Uh, it's used a lot in drink flavoring. Anything that has kind of that, uh, that lemon or limey, almost sour taste uh, likely uses citric acid to get there. And if you look at the ingredients in a lot of common drink mixes and stuff, you'll find citric acid. Acid. Uh, these propel packets that I like to use, uh, ingredient number one, citric acid. Uh, even the uh, crystal light sweet tea flavor, which isn't sour at all, um, citric acid is the second ingredient. So obviously it's, it's safe for human consumption. Now if we mix a little, this is about one tablespoon worth of baking soda and about one tablespoon of citric acid. We mix that in water. All of that fizzing is carbon dioxide. So since the sparkle is orchestrating a chemical reaction, capturing the carbon dioxide off the top and injecting that into a sparkle bottle, uh, the device is a bit more complicated than your average carbonator. Uh, for instance, most carbonators don't require electricity. They have a manually actuated valve that controls the flow of CO2 from the canister to the bottle. You gotta plug in your sparkle. So if you noticed, when I just had the two chemicals sitting in the cup with no water, they were not reacting to each other. They were just sitting there. And it wasn't until the water was added did they start to produce carbon dioxide. Well, there is a reservoir on the back of the sparkle for water to make that, to facilitate that reaction. Uh, this water can be tap water. It will never touch your drink. It is only used for mixing those two chemicals and it will be discarded after the drink is made. Now on the front, there is a wastewater reservoir. Uh, once this water is done facilitating the reaction, it'll be pumped into this wastewater reservoir along with any citric acid or baking soda that, that wasn't spent in that reaction. Uh, so again, nothing from your drink ends up in the wastewater reservoir. It is purely just the waste product from the reaction. And then finally, the big part of the reaction are these little sachets of, uh, of chemicals. It's a little two-pack sachet. Uh, one of them, they're, they're clearly labeled. One of them is baking soda. The other one is citric acid. Uh, it does say that it's specially granulated. However, I can't really tell any difference between the granulation of the sachet citric acid compared to the this generic citric acid that I bought off of Amazon. So while I say it's special, it doesn't really seem to be. Now these sachets go into the top of the device. Just pull this handle and there's a tube in the top where you can clip the sachets and dump it straight into the tube. Uh, and it does tend, it, it is funneled up there, but it does tend to stick to the sides a little bit. So you might want to encourage um, all of the material to, to make its way through the funnel. All right, and with that, chemicals are in the top. The reservoir is full, the wastewater bucket is empty, uh, the machine is ready for the reaction. All we have to do is prepare our drink. Now the Sparkle bottles are rather complex. Uh, they come in three parts. 
Uh, there's the bottle itself, which is nothing special about that. It's just a, a plastic shell of a bottle. Uh, there is a bottom valve, and this is the inlet valve. All the carbon dioxide will be pushed through this valve into this jug. And then there is a top cap with a pressure release valve. Uh, the issue that I have with these bottles isn't the valves, although they do add complexity. Uh, it's that where the bottom valve screws onto the bottle, the shell obviously indents to facilitate the, the, the screw threads. Uh, what I find is that with cold drinks, condensation occurs on the bottle and it travels its, its way down into that groove and it'll sit in that groove. So whenever you take a drink of, of your, your carbonated beverage, all of that condensation that's sitting in this ring now falls to the bottom and drips on your chest, your pants, your table, whatever it may be. I, I have not seen any leakage from this valve once it's been removed from the device. However, I do get a lot of drippage because of all the condensation gathering at that groove. Now, one of the major differences between the Sparkle and a lot of carbonators is that the Sparkle encourages you to pre-mix your drinks. Uh, most carbonators say you should only use filtered water uh, and that should be the only thing you carbonate on the device. Being able to use pre-mixed drinks is great for two reasons. First, if you have to apply the mix or the syrup afterwards, the first thing you're going to do is take your drink, unscrew the cap, which is going to release all the excess carbon dioxide, put in your powder or your syrup or whatever it may be, close it up again, and then shake it violently to mix everything up. Well, you've already released the carbon dioxide pressure now you're shaking the drink and releasing even more of that carbon dioxide that you had just put into the drink. And second, some things can't be unmixed. Uh, so the sparkle can do weird things like fruit juices or if you wanted to recarbonate soda. My wife often doesn't finish a two liter in time bef you know, before it goes flat. Uh, so I am frequently recarbonating her regular Coca-Cola. So now today I'm gonna use one of the generic syrups. I have a a uh, sparkle bottle full of just filtered refrigerator water, a bunch of ice, and I do recommend using ice. And, and again, there's a couple reasons for that. First, the sparkle is going to take two minutes or so to fully carbonate this beverage. And that whole time, it's going to get warmer and warmer. If you add some ice in there, it retains the cold throughout the entire carbonation process. Second, the ice also acts like an agitation mechanism. As the bubbles are bubbling through, they have to jostle the ice and move it out of the way. Uh, and what, it, it may be a complete placebo, it may be only in my head, but it seems that adding that ice in there um, not only keeps your drink colder, but also helps it either gather or retain more of the carbonation. So I have regular water here. I'm just going to use some standard soda stream syrup. This is just off the shelf syrup, nothing exciting. And I actually prefer to use a little bit less syrup than uh, was normally recommended. Also to note, these bottles are only three quarters of a liter. So some devices may use a liter bottle. Uh, and if that is the case, the instructions for um, the amount of flavoring to use may need to be adjusted because these are three quarter liter bottles. All right, now notice I don't need to shake it up now. It's gonna get plenty agitated on its own. Okay, so now I'm going to place the bottle into the sparkle. I'm going to lower the safety ring. And it's going to play a cute little tune. Uh, that's going to do two things. That's going to open the valve in the bottom for air for carbon dioxide injection uh, and prepare the valve at the top for pressure release. The top has a handful of buttons. This one through five, uh, that is your carbonation level. And I'm usually like a three or a four, depending on what I'm drinking. This is soda-like, so I like it to be pretty fizzy. So I'm going to go with a four on this one. Uh, and then once you've selected your, uh, your carbonation level, you press the big round button and the sparkle will do its thing. It's going to draw water from the back. Uh, it's going to put it into a mixing bucket in the middle. Uh, and what you're hearing is an agitator that's going to keep uh, moving that water around uh, to ensure that that carbon dioxide reaction is taking place. All right, and that happy little tone means that it's complete. Uh, that was almost exactly three minutes to do a level four carbonation for this drink. And now that it's done, you can lift the safety ring. What you heard there was all of the wastewater from the reaction draining into the wastewater reservoir, as well as the pressure releasing, some of the pressure releasing at least, from the bottle. Uh, when you pull out the bottle, uh, you do get a bit of junk down here at the, uh, where the, 
the CO2 injector pushes on the, the bottle valve. Uh, so you may want to take a, let me say, you will want to take a paper towel and wipe that little pin off. Um, in addition, you're never gonna get that perfectly clean. Uh, there's also this tray, this, this, this kind of um, spring-loaded tray at the bottom uh, that, that the, the, the sparkle uses to tell if you have the bottle inserted correctly. Uh, it's possible for liquid to kind of seep down between that injection tube um, and, and this tray and kind of rest in the bottom of this, this device. They don't make this assembly super simple. Uh, there's only a handful of screws in the bottom. It's easy enough to take that out. There's only three screws holding in the little pin assembly. And that's the important part. That's the part that's actually going to, you know, the, the carbon dioxide is going to pass that pin to get into your drink. So if you're going to clean something, take out those three screws, clean that little pin, make sure that it, that part is clean. The bottom doesn't, you know, no, no part of that is going to touch your drink. However, just having a bunch of old, you know, sugary crap sitting in the bottom of the plastic is probably not something you don't want to do. Um, so, you know, taking off the bottom is six screws, it's a couple of snaps, it's, uh, you know, removing a tube. Uh, it's not super simple, but it's also not that complex. So don't be afraid to do it once in a while. All right, so now that uh, we've got our, our drink off of the, off of the, the sparkle, uh, you can press this this button uh, on the, it's actually a valve on the top to release any excess pressure. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just unscrew the top and it'll, it'll puff kind of like a bottle of soda. Uh, but uh, if it is difficult to unscrew or if, you know, that kind of scares you when there's too much of a blast whenever you unscrew, go ahead and push the button. It's not gonna be strong enough to pop off like a cork or, or you know, do any damage or anything like that. I've seen horror stories with some of the other carbonators uh, where they don't remove the bottle correctly and the bottle comes shooting off or the cap comes flying off or something like that. That's not the case here, um, but you do have a valve there to release any excess pressure. Uh, and now you have a fully carbonated drink. And I will say the carbon, the carbon dioxide that comes out of the sparkle seems different than soda. It's kind of more effervescent than, uh, than, than kind of like the big bubbles that you, you find in soda. More like champagne than Coca-Cola. Uh, and I don't know if that's a product of how they're injecting. You know, it, it is a, a three minute process of slow pressure buildup. Uh, whereas something like a soda stream is a violent instantaneous reaction. Um, so, you know, maybe that's got something to do with, with how the, you know, the, the, the carbon dioxide is dispersed throughout the, the liquid. Uh, it is sufficient carbonation. There is a lot there. If you crank this thing up to five, uh, these drinks will come out practically frothy. Uh, but uh, it is, it's a different feel to the carbonation. It, it's, uh, you know, more ticklish and, and light than, you know, burping kind of carbonation. Now, that run did take about an inch or so off of, uh, of water out of, the, uh, out of the reservoir, and it did dump about an inch or so of water into the wastewater reservoir. Uh, so you will get, you know, five or six runs out of both the, the, the water and the wastewater reservoirs before you need to, to change them or, or empty them. Uh, so it's not like a, a thing you have to do every time, uh, but, uh, you know, every five or so bottles Make sure you, you check those. Uh, if you do run it without emptying the wastewater reservoir and this reservoir is over full, that water will overflow outside, you know, out, out of the, the bottom of the device. It'll, it'll bubble over right, right through the bottom. I've done that before. And if you try to run it without water in the reservoir in the back, there is no safeguard uh, to stop you from, from running it that way. Uh, and it will just kind of spin without producing any carbon dioxide. The motor makes a different noise when it's spinning without water. I would imagine that doing that for a prolonged period might have some issues of, you know, lubrication or temperature or something like that. Don't do it, you know, if you can avoid it, but don't, you know, if you accidentally did start the thing without any water in it, it's not like it's immediately destroyed. Let's spend a minute talking about Sparkle's running costs compared to traditional carbonators. Now, if you do everything right and you recycle your cylinders, you have enough to get free shipping and packaging, you'll spend about $15 on a 60 liter cylinder for a traditional carbonator. The consensus online seems to be that you'll get between 30 and 40 carbonated liter bottles from that 60 liter cylinder. So we'll average that to 35 liters. Now that will go down if you like a lot of carbonation, it'll go up if you don't like much, but 35 is a decent average. And that comes out to 43 cents per liter. 
Now, if you did not do everything right and you paid full retail, which is around $30 for a new 60 liter cylinder, that cost goes up to 86 cents per liter. For the Sparkle, you can buy a 90 pack of sachets for about $40 on Amazon, and those 90 sachets will carbonate 90 bottles regardless of the carbonation level you prefer, so there's no average estimation required. The Sparkle bottles are only 0.75 liters though, so those 90 bottles are only 67.5 liters, and that comes out to 59 cents per liter. So on the face of it, it's slightly more expensive than a traditional carbonator if you can get a decent price on the recycled cylinders, and it's a bit less if you are paying non-optimal prices for those cylinders. Now that's not the end of the story. As I mentioned, the sachets are filled with common chemicals that can be purchased in bulk. I personally like two pound bags as they are plenty big but still compact enough to shove in cabinets or pantries. A two pound bag of baking soda will run you about $10 and a two pound bag of citric acid is about 12. You'll need two tablespoons of citric acid and about one and a half, a little over, tablespoons of baking soda for each sparkle carbonation run. Now that's about 100 bottles before the citric acid runs dry. You'll still have some baking soda left. And that comes out to 29 cents per liter. And that's a steal compared to the other options. So what's the verdict on the Sparkle? Should you buy one or not? Well, there's no arguing with the end product. The, the carbonation is effervescent, it's smooth, it comes out perfectly every time because it's electronically controlled. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to carbonate drinks, this thing does that very well. And it does it without those CO2 cartridges. That was the main stumbling block for other carbonators for me. I didn't want to have to worry about stocking and then shipping and or going to a physical store and, and exchanging CO2 cylinders. It did not interest me. Uh, and as far as I can tell, this is the only device on the market that, that produces carbon dioxide via chemical reaction and not from a pre-compressed cylinder. Uh, so if the trade-off of, of eliminating that occasional pain of having to do the the CO2 cylinder swap, um, if that outweighs the frequent pain of having to wait three minutes for your drinks to be carbonated, uh, as well as you know maintaining the reservoirs, then, then that is also a net plus. Um, I do have some concerns about the device's longevity. Uh, there is a motor in it, obviously, that's stirring the water. Uh, there is a, a bunch of mechanics to it. There's seals on the bottom and on the top. Uh, this bar itself isn't the most uh, structurally sound thing, although it does seem to get the job done. Uh, you, you do probably want to open the bottom up and clean it once in a while. Uh, so, you know, if, is this a device that's going to last a lifetime? Probably not, although I would guess other carbonators aren't exactly the, you know, super, uh, super durable either. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I am happy with the Sparkle. I'm eager to try out a standard carbonator, uh, a SodaStream-like device, and to see how big of a burden you know, dealing with the tanks really is. Uh, and being able to prepare a drink in a matter of seconds versus minutes uh, is something that, that is interesting as well. So I might end up picking up a standard carbonator just so I can compare and contrast with the Sparkle. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't like the Sparkle. It is a good device and it gets the job done. So if you like this video, uh, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you like my other videos, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.